It was a beat down. By the way, Joey Bosa, whoop, he's legit. Bakhtiari found that out. Melvin Ingram just destroys him on the other side. Oh, he's healthy. Watch out, NFL. They're getting their players back. Here come the Chargers again. Look, is that both of them? It is. Bosa and Ingram. Stay behind the sticks against this, this team. You're in trouble. And they only had to rush forward to do that anyway. Yep. It was offense, defense, special teams. Cliche. Punt blocked by Drew Tranquil. The Chargers beat the Packers for the first time since 1984 by a final of 26 to 11, Greeny. And then we get to the Bears and the Eagles yesterday, and so much attention, Dan Orlovsky being paid to Mitchell Trubisky, and in the first half, it could not have gone worse. Well, they just played a drop-back football game where they just wanted to play, hey, you drop back a couple steps and try to find a traditional passing game, and the Eagles' defensive line was completely dominant green. Really bad play calling out of Chicago. The Bears had nine yards on 20 plays in the first half. They averaged 16 inches per play. Eagles up 12-0 at halftime. Then in the third quarter, they added that. That's the former Bear, Jordan Howard, going 13 yards up the middle. So the Eagles have a 19-0 lead. But the Bears would make a game of this. Trubisky, David Montgomery, who will eventually take it in for a score. They got a little confidence in their pass game going. Threw it down the field a little bit. Nice, nice ball by Trubisky to Montgomery. So they get it to 19-14. And then you know what happened? Their defense went on the field. That's supposed to be the strength of their team. It's supposed to be the 2,000 Ravens. They gave up an eight-minute drive to the Eagles, who were able to run out the clock and win a big one, 22-14. Let's talk. So when you hurt yourself and you don't create positive plays, you put yourself in a tough position. And good defenses like that are going to tee off with the rush, challenge you with, with man coverage, which they did. And we just didn't make enough plays. It's frustrating for all of us. It's not what we wanted or, or where we know we should be. Um, and so that's, that's where, where it's at. But we got we to gotta do everything we can um, to, to stick together. Uh, knowing from experience is brought to you by Farmers Insurance. And Rex, you know from experience what it's like to be your team is losing and people had high expectations and the criticism is there. So I'd ask you, as we watch the Bears play, we've talked a lot this morning about Adam Gase. We've talked about Freddie Kitchens. What you see is the problem there, the coach or the quarterback? Well, I think it's all three phases. I, I think coaching, the offense obviously is, is, has been horrendous so far. And then the defense, I, I don't think, is, is playing to an elite level. So to me, that's the way they, all three phases. I like the fact that Nagy says, hey, we've got to stick together. He's exactly right. The only way they're going to pull, out, pull this you know, thing out is if the coach, quarterback, defense, that, that whole team stays together. They can get this thing done, but, you know, if all of a sudden now you're going to bench Trubisky, well, it's not just his fault. You can't bench the whole team. Uh, Mitchell Trubisky played good football yesterday, but here's the thing. We just sat up here for the last two hours and praised Greg Roman for how he's handled Lamar Jackson. I mentioned this last week. Mitchell Trubisky needs to be not seen in the same light, but used in the viewpoint of the, one of the things he does best is get on the edge. They never took a play-action shot outside of the pocket until 10 minutes to go in the third quarter. This was the first time they call a play where they get him outside the pocket and get a big play action throw downfield. Big play. They go back to it. They go back to or go to a very uh, similar concept of they zone read, get him on the perimeter run game the very next play. Two plays in a row where they do what they do best at that position, and it leads to good offense. And I go, why? It is so hard for you to get to that more consistently. Look, look, you're exactly right, man. This guy, one thing we know he has, he's got plenty of athleticism and he has arm talent. There's a reason he was a second player drafted. What I think they've done is they, or what they need to do is go back to what got him last year. One read, check down, or one read, run, create. That's what they need to do. He's playing. He'll play with way more confidence. If you have, have him out there playing Joe quarterback back there where he's got to read the whole field, that's not work. It's been a disaster for him. I think to Greeny's point, though, in the meeting, um, like we all knew that there was going to be question marks on the Bears' offense. What happened to this vaunted, historic defense that was incapable of stopping them down the stretch? Shouldn't they take a huge responsibility or at least a oh. large part of the blame for this as well? I, I don't see that's it that way. I, I, I see this because the Bears' defense had gotten off the field a little bit to allow them to get back in this game. This, The ending of this game is so much more about Carson Wentz and his ability to, right now, thrive when they need him the most. This is the second straight week 
that Carson Wentz has led his football team on a fourth quarter, eight plus minute drive to ice away a football game. It's the third time Wentz has done it this year. You know how many other quarterbacks have done it this year in the NFL? A big fat but zero. But this was supposed to be the blueprint, Coach. It was supposed Absolutely. to be just make it a game at the end of the game and get it to your well, defense, and that's this, exactly what Trubisky did. This is what concerns me. Look, this is the same defense as last year. Now, I know Hicks is gone. That's a big part, an injury. You and every other team have had this. But your defense doesn't look anything like it. What are you missing? You're missing Vic Fangio. That's what you're missing. Yep. He's no Buddy Ryan, but Vic was pretty darn good. <laughs> but when I land, I'm telling the truth. Because uh, because my dad's team would have knocked the quarterback out, you know. I mean that that's that's how you win. This game right here, they went on an eight and eight and a half minute drive against a, a supposedly a great defense. That doesn't happen. Yeah, the bottom line of it, Dan, I, I'm hearing what you're saying, but this is a team that's supposed to be built on an historically great defense and just enough offense. And if your quarterback gets you just enough offense, as he did in the second half yesterday, and I agree with everything you said about how they're misusing him to his skill set. But at the end of the day, that defense is supposed to give him another chance. They're supposed to get off the field and get the ball back, and it took over eight minutes of possession, and then it's over. At that point, it is over. Listen, they got off the field, though. They just didn't get off in the one time they needed to, that drive. Like, they just needed one play in that drive to get off the field. They had gotten off three or four drives in a row where they forced Philly to punt the football and whatnot. So, I get it, guys. I know that, like, this should be – but. I mean, they didn't, it wasn't like they got 40 hung on them. They were on the road against a really good offensive team that's playing good offensive football and gave up, what, 20, 22, 20, points. 22 points? 22 points. Is like, the that's, but, come but, on. But I, I take it to heart because I've been on, on teams where it, it sits back and, like, look, we, we beat a team 7-6 to six with the Jets, for God's sakes. Yeah. Why? Because we had to. We weren't sure. any good on offense. We had to win that way. But if you've got a good defense, you almost take the pride on, hey, look, if, if they don't score, Ray Lewis hit it great. One time he comes over the side and he goes, Rex, if they don't score, they don't win. You're right, Ray, but three points? Yeah. Like, I, he, But it's sure. the truth. That's the mentality that's missing with this group. Right now, are they a good defense? They're absolutely a good defense, but they're not a great one. Meanwhile, the Eagles get a huge win. Off that loss to the Cowboys, now back-to-back -back weeks, they come up with big wins. Entering this week, Dallas had a 64% chance of winning the division. But with that win yesterday by Philly, that's dropped nearly 7% and would drop significantly further if Dallas is unable to win tonight against the Giants here. And in that division, you never know what might happen. These teams met the beginning of the season. It was obviously a vastly different situation for the Giants then. So what do you expect tonight? If you, what, what are you buying into more in the NFC East right now, the Eagles or the Cowboys? I'm still buying the Eagles because the Eagles have found themselves. You look at them, they remind me a lot of the 2017 Eagles right now. They're running the football downhill between the tackles, something they did in 2017. Their quarterback is coming up in clutch moments, something he did in 2017. The only part of their game that right now concerns me a little bit is they can't throw the football downfield, and that is – they were able to do that in 27. That's alarming. And Deshaun Jackson, is he healthy? Is he not? That would be the, the, the hesitation I have, but I'm still. You thought that their secondary could potentially keep them out of the playoffs. You think that they've shored that up? You're good there now? Well, I mean, they've gotten healthy. You know, Darby coming back and Mills coming back ha has helped. It's, it, they're not locked down by any means right now. But if the offense continues to run the football and control and Carson plays so well in clutch moments, Absolutely. Rex, these teams I, played each other two weeks ago, and Dallas won and won convincing. Yeah, they did. And look, but I love the way the Eagles have responded these, these last couple of weeks. Yeah. This team plays better with, when, when their backs are against the wall, and it certainly is. But I still take Dallas here, and I'll tell you why. That offensive line, if healthy, they, they can just they can give Dak enough time to, yeah. to carve you up, and they can pound the ball all over the place. But it's that offensive line more than it is the skill position players. And, and look, tonight we're, we expect them to light up this giant team, at least I do. Right. Why? Because the Giants can't stop anybody. we got to pay attention to the Eagles' schedule, though. Like the, They come out of a bye, and they play the Patriots and the Seahawks, both at home. And then their last five games are like Washington. They play the Giants twice. They get the Dolphins. And then I believe they finish week 17 against the Cowboys up in Philly. They, they might go 5-0. and So if they can split one-on-one -on -one with the Patriots in Seattle, 
They've got a chance to go and win that division. Week 17 will be awesome in Philly. Meanwhile, we will see the Cowboys tonight on ESPN. The entire afternoon will begin with SportsCenter at 4 o'clock Eastern time, answering the question, how much pressure is on Dak Prescott tonight against the G-Men? Plus, why there's no chemistry between Baker Mayfield and Odell, and the latest on Tua's status for Alabama showdown this weekend with LSU. Start the afternoon leading into the...